Hi, this is Arthur Hill, Senior Technical Analyst with StockCharts.com. Today we're going to get you started with scanning. We're going to go over accessing the scan workbench, the parts of the workbench. We're going to run a basic scan. I'm going to show you how easy it is to add components to your scan, and I'll show you where to find help and samples. Let's get started. So there are a couple ways you can access the Advanced Scan Workbench. I'm on the Charts and Tools page you can see here up at the top. And you can access your scans by clicking the button there on the right, provided that you're logged in. You can also click on that dashboard link at the top of the web page there. So when I click on your dashboard, there you can see on the left, I have a number of options and one of them is the advanced scan workbench so I can click that link. Also again at the top we have a button for scans and if I just scroll down the page you can see your scans and from there I can select a scan and I can run it, I can edit it or I could just start a new scan if I want it. And there's another link to the advanced scan workbench just below. So I'm going to go ahead and click edit the scan to open up the advanced scan workbench. Let's look at some of the features of the technical scan workbench here. So first of all, you can see that we have the scan editor box there below. And if you start a new scan, this is the first line that you're going to get type of stock and moving average of volume is above 40,000. This scan is starting zero trading days before the last update and I can click on that box to get a drop down menu to pick a date in the past. So if I want to scan for May 6th I could do that. I could use the last intraday update or I could pick the previous market close. Then at the top you have a drop down menu for your favorite scans there. So this list has your scans that you can click to select. If I want the MACD bull cross scan, I can select it. I can rename that scan if I would like. I can save it if I make any changes. You can save as if you want to rename it. You could delete. And this view all button will show you all your scans. There I can see all of my scans and the scan code associated with those scans. And if I want to delete any of them, I can check the box and click delete. Now you can see here on the right that the advanced editor is on. That's because the box is green. And if you look at the scan code on the left, the advanced editor has color coded it. The terms are in light blue. The conjunction is in purple. And then further down, you can see the indicators are in blue. And then the numbers are in orange. And that makes it easier to write your scan and to see if something is missing or something needs to be added. If I turn this off by clicking on that button, you can see that it changes just to normal black and white. So it's not as easy to read. So I'll put that back on. Now on the left, you can see the numbers there that show you the number of lines in the scan code. And if we look down below the scan editor box, there's a button to run the scan. You can check your syntax to make sure the scan is correct and there is nothing wrong with your code. And you can see the syntax is correct. I can reformat it and that will reformat it in the style that a coder would write it, so to speak. So if I click that reformat button, you can see we've got some spaces separating brackets that align. So this bracket has a space and this bracket to the right has a space because they align. The errors and warning button is also a drop down where you can choose errors and warnings or simply just errors. And how does that work? Well, right now we're showing warnings as well. And you can see the explanation mark with the yellow triangle is showing us a warning. And it's saying that OR clauses should be wrapped in a parent bracket clause. Click here to fix. So if I click that, you can see we've added a parent bracket clause to close those three. So now they are grouped together. And you can either hide the warnings or you can show them in that regard. So I'll undo that and I still got the warning. And if I only want to see errors, I can click errors only. So this isn't an error, but it's just a good idea to close 
your OR clauses with parent brackets. Now, if you're writing a scan, you're not sure of the exact code for an indicator, you can usually just start typing the name of the indicator and you'll get some auto suggestions. So I'm typing in MACD and I get three auto suggestions and I'm gonna choose the MACD line. So I have MACD line is greater than zero and maybe I wanna put MACD signal. And so I start, start typing in MACD and I can choose MACD signal. So now I want the MACD line to be above the MACD signal. And you can see that there's an error there because statements should be wrapped in brackets. And so I will wrap that in brackets and I will now have a scan that looks robust. Now we can also easily add lines to our scan, clauses to our scan using the scan components section just below the editor. So you can see all kinds of drop down menus to choose things. I can choose technical indicators here. So if I want to choose the MACD line, I just choose it there and click add. And then I go up to the top and I can see and MACD line is above zero. But if I want the MACD crossing above zero, I need to change that greater than to an X. And so what I'm going to do is backspace and choose X for cross. And so I want the MACD line to cross above zero. And anytime you add something to your scan, you should check the syntax to make sure it's right after each line. That way you can catch any mistakes directly. So with the code complete and the syntax correct, we can click the run scan button to get the scan results for our code. And you can see two stocks have met the criteria for that scan. And if I want to see one of those charts, I just click on the name and I will get Crown Castle. And there you can see the 50 day is above the 200 day and MACD has crossed above zero. Now, if you need any help with your scans, there's lots of places to go up at the top right there. You can see there is a help link. And if you scroll down, to the bottom, you can see on the right, we have a link for instructions for the scan editor. You can see some keyboard shortcuts to help you out. And further down, just below everything, we have some links for instructions, writing scans, and scan examples. And I'd recommend you start out at the instructions. Here you can see the outline on the right if you want to jump to a particular point of this article on scanning and you can see more links for articles and tutorials. So this video is just designed to get you started on the scan workbench. There are other videos that go into detail on a number of different subjects regarding scanning. I'd recommend you check out those for more information. Thanks very much for tuning in. Good luck and good scanning.